Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Hello, town board and Donna and Warren. How are you guys? Good, good. good. Okay, well, um, welcome to the Monday, May 4th virtual town board meeting. Um, we're getting pretty good at this, thanks to, uh, to Neil. But um, uh, yeah, we're here again. Got a, a, pub, a couple of public hearings that we'll be um, rescheduling or, or adjourning to the future. Uh, a quick workshop by um, uh, Kathleen Moss on the MS4 program and uh, some resolutions. So uh, please join me while we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the, of the United, United States, States of America, America, America and to the, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, 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 justice, justice. For all. Okay. Okay, so um, we um, are able to take a public comment on any of the resolutions uh, by having those submitted to our town clerk, Dee McGrogan at HydeParkNY.us. Um, and Donna, I don't know if you've received any public comments? Oh, I have not. Not as of yet, okay. All right, good. So we do have two public hearings on the agenda that we've just uh, been adjourning to <coughs> meetings because um, we feel that we should uh, do all our, and our, make our best attempt to hold them in the public realm. Although uh, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been working on honing a procedure to conduct public hearings. Um, Neil uh, worked hard to put this procedure together. It, it will be shared by um, the, uh, it was vetted by the planning board and the ZBA and our respective attorneys. And uh, we will be uh, utilizing that um, well, actually, the planning board and the VBA will be using it before the town board. So, um, because we, we, I would really prefer to extend our public hearings to the point, uh, hopefully, where we will actually be able to meet. Um, I will be asking for a motion to adjourn both the, the continuation of the uh, public hearing on the town code, as well as um, amending uh, the schedule of use regula regulations. I make that motion. I'll okay. second that. And all in favor? All, all right. right. Okay. All opposed? opposed? Oh, right. I knew I was supposed to do something yeah. else. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, all opposed? Uh, no. Okay. All right. So, um, we do have a workshop presentation and uh, Kathleen Moss, the uh, zoning administrator, is charged with enforcing the MS4 um, pro uh, policies. So um, thanks for joining us, Tad. Hello. Hi. Hey, Tad. Hey, Tad. I'm so, sorry, uh, I, I, didn't, I wasn't able to connect on YouTube, so I don't know what has been uh, discussed. Um, but I'm, I'm here asking the board to set a public hearing to review our MS4 annual report. The draft report has been posted online and it's available for review and providing comments. The cover page um, includes the contact information. And thank you very much for showing us where you can go on the quick links to get to the MS4 annual report for this year. There are quite a few listed and it's the draft report for 2019-2020 uh, um, that is open for comment. Uh, I appreciate you setting the, the public hearing. Um, we'll try to make revisions if there are comments before submitting uh, the report to DEC, which is a part of our uh, Speedy's permit, stormwater Speedy's permit. Um, the report is due on June 9th, so I appreciate the fact that we're able to set something uh, before that date this year uh, in consideration of the virus. Basically, it's a regulatory program that's administered by local governments um, over a certain population density. It's a Speedy's stormwater permit that 
is issued by DEC to the town and we're responsible for maintaining our stormwater systems and um, our drains, releasing uh, clean water into the waters of the state. There are six major components of the program, education and outreach, public involvement, illicit discharge, construction site maintenance, post-construction stormwater facility maintenance, and pollution prevention, good housekeeping. We will go over uh, a little bit more in detail when you hold the meeting, uh, various aspects of those six components. So I thank you very much. Okay, great, thanks, Tad. Yeah. Um, so Donna, uh, what is our first meeting in June? That's why I was just trying to look that up. The first meeting in June is on the full, or, I'm sorry, long month is on the 8th. Um, June 8th. Tad, is that adequate for you? You or bet. It's okay? We'll turn okay. it right around. Okay. Get it out the door. <laughs> All right, good. All right, well, thank you for uh, keeping us informed. Um, look forward to the public hearing. I know we don't typically have a lot of comments uh, on the MS4 report, <laughs> but I, I know that you put a lot of effort into the enforcement and organizing it, so I appreciate that. And uh, as everyone knows, drainage is a huge issue in High Park, <laughs> actually in all communities. So thank you for that, Tad. Okay. All right. So uh, that will be a resolution that is on our agenda for setting the public hearing. Okay, so I'm just going to give a real brief update on um, uh, the basically the county's plan to restart Duchess to reconstitute uh, local government and just, you know, little projected impacts to our budget. Um, originally, the county had proposed or projected a 50% reduction in our sales tax in their sales tax revenue. Um, they've now um, adjusted that to 40%. And, you know, in speaking with our comptroller, um, he's pretty much su suggesting that we take a wait and see approach because there is going to be lots of pent up demand when the economy reopens. So um, there, and there have been certain sectors of the economy, economy that are actually ex uh, experiencing increased sales. So um, he um, is, has suggested that in, the, in July, the county issues a report, uh, like a mid-year report on the uh, collected sales tax, so we'll anticipate that in July. But uh, the county executive has set up a number of subcommittees, one of which is finance, um, to uh, begin this restart Duchess process. And um, one of those committees is headed by Heidi Seelback. Um, and so there will be some other feedback we'll have on, on sales tax before uh, too, too many months um, transpire. So we're taking a wait and see approach on that, though we are evaluating expenses, we're evaluating projects. Um, it was interesting in talking with the comptroller last week, he suggested that it is a good time for the town to embark on some uh, capital improvement projects because uh, for two reasons, essentially, because um, the first being that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, contractors that are looking for work. They've been out of work for several months. And so uh, he projects that we'll get some better deals uh, if we pursue those projects at this time. And the second reason being that borrowing costs are so low. So, uh, you know, we're going to be taking a look at some highway projects um, and perhaps some other smaller capital uh, improvement projects in the next couple of weeks and kind of get a plan together on that. Um, but uh, the state is, uh, you know, obviously uh, the governor is projecting somewhere around a $13 billion shortfall. We're looking for support from the federal government hoping that that comes through. Uh, and if not, um, the state will certainly be cutting back where they can. Uh, there are two sources of funding for the town that we receive directly from the state. One is CHIPS, which is funding for our paving of our roads. Uh, this year it's around um, 191,000. So our highway super uh, has been um, participating in many conversations with other highway supers. Uh, he's been uh, 
um, uh, engaging in certain um, other information that's been provided by the Cornell Road Program or various other entities. And, and so there's kind of two schools on, of thought on that. The comptroller had indicated that it was likely that that would be the first funding source to dry up. Um, and, uh, but um, Howie's had input from other sources that indicate uh, that, that it would uh, uh, be something that if the towns did spend, that they're like, spend the monies, uh, that they're likely to receive it. So that's an ongoing conversation. And I'd like to express my thanks to Howie for always uh, being willing to work with the, all of us on the, the money part. So um, the second uh, funding source that the town receives is aid to municipalities. And this year, that would be 188,000. Again, that they, in their first budget report, there were discussions that that might be eliminated, but um, I'm hopeful that won't happen. Uh, it's uh, something that, you know, the town, we rely on it and uh, it would be very problematic if they were to um, not come through on that funding. So, um, but, you know, we've been working really closely with the county executive on uh, the plans for both reopening local government and for plans to reopen the economy, restarting Duchess. Um, and the county is uh, embracing uh, by necessity, the governor's uh, four phased plan to reopen the um, reopen the economy. Uh, the first phase would be manufacturing, wholesale, and construction. Phase two would be finance and retail. Phase three, restaurants, hotels, uh, and hotels. Oh, I think I have that wrong. Sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not retail. So phase two would be um, finance and real estate. And phase three, restaurants, hotels, and retail. Phase four, schools and theaters. Uh, and they're basically the opening of these, or the introduction of these phases will be based on the numbers, uh, the trends that we are seeing as far as hospitalizations, uh, number of people on ventilators, deaths, and uh, number of people um, who are admitted to hospitals, if I didn't say that. Oh, and the overall number of cases. So if our trends uh, continue downward as they have been, it looks like the um, county will be reopening uh, beginning May 16th to this very limited uh, phased approach. Um, that's also expected to be how the town, uh, the dates the town will begin to uh, very limited opening of, of our local government. Uh, there's going to be lots involved in that in terms of creating plans for personal protection devices, for um, um, cleaning, for disinfection, and for social distancing. So we do have a lot of work to do to prepare for those items. Uh, and that will also apply to businesses. So it's a very uh, dynamic and quickly, quickly changing minute to minute almost plan where uh, today it might be one thing and tomorrow, depending on the new information, it may change to something else, which it's really hard to operate in the, under those conditions. But I think we, um, we have, mastered the art of, uh, of, of conducting uh, town business virtually. And um, uh, we will continue to do that, but while still embracing these, these changes. Hey, yes. Question. Is there, is the, there's a gap between each phase? Is it, is it well, I don't think that, yes, yes, that's a good point, Neil. It's, so it's, they're imagining rolling them out in two week segments. But again, it's, it's all going to be based on the data and the numbers. And originally the governor talked about um, doing this in a regional way, but on the call today with the county executive, he really clarified that Duchess and Ulster and Orange uh, will, will likely be able to use their own data and uh, we're not going to be uh, grouped in with Westchester and Rockland, which is part is the Hudson, mid Hudson region. So um, I think that that's a good point though, Neil, that it's not going to be immediate, but 
yet there's going to be uh, a lot of dialogue and a lot of activities between phases. Thanks. Sure. So it's a little daunting. Uh, you know, we've all been under this uh, umbrella of uh, lots of protection and thinking about uh, seeing that reduced is a little scary, but you know, we're all very looking forward to the return to a new normal or a, a I don't know if that would be a return. <laughs> yes. so, but um, there were a lot of discussions um, uh, between the county and the uh, mayors and supervisors on, you know, what those, what, what government will look like and uh, the services that we'll be able to provide. You know, a very important issue to us is, you know, how can how we would implement uh, summer camp and uh, a lot of the other activities are music in the parks and, you know, these social gatherings. So we don't really have a lot of information on that yet. Um, that was not really uh, brought through in great detail, the social gathering aspect, but clearly um, we are looking at a, a period where there will be a lot of limitations on mass gatherings. So uh, again, we should have a little bit more details um, within the next week on whether uh, we will be able to have camp. But there, uh, the, at the current time, the state is postulate or is proposing that camp would be allowed but with lots of limitations. And um, we'll all be evaluating the economic impact of that and the likelihood that we'd actually be able to do those things. So, you know, it's an ongoing conversation uh, with the, between the county, the Department of Health who regulates camps, as well as pools and the uh, mayors and supervisors. And on today's call, um, um, Rob Pollard, uh, was a participant and uh, on Thursday's call, we'll have a lot more detail, get into a lot more detail on that. But, you know, we, the county executive talks quite a lot about managing expectations. And I think that is a big part of what we're trying to do is <clears throat> reinstitute our, our, our government uh, uh, actions or policies, but still being mindful of the changes that that we'll have to embrace. So more on that as time goes on. Okay, does anyone have anything else they would like to add or or speak about? When town hall uh, reopens on May 16th, is that still going to be at a reduced number of, of people? Yes, yes. I mean, for the town hall, uh, you know, we didn't get into those percentages, Ken, but um, there's certainly the mention that um, we'll need to have a plan for disinfection. We'll have to have a plan for people to have, you know, all the appropriate PPEs, the social distancing. Uh, so that's, that's the work that we're going to be doing over the next two weeks. Does that also apply for the highway department or can they go? So the highway department is, um, I have been talking with Howie quite a bit and I, his plan as of this morning, you know, they've been on, um, he basically created yep. two teams and right. they alternated. And I did hear that uh, there's a highway department in the county that two of their employees do have COVID. So I think that was a really good strategy on Howie's part to make sure that we had, we always had at least half our team. So um, I think uh, in our discussions today, we resolved that we would uh, begin the full uh, implementation of the highway department on the May 16th. Actually, I think it's May 18th is, is the Monday. That's that Monday. That's, that's the likely, uh, because we're, how he's looking at it is that's when construction is allowed and that's when they'll start working on the basins and <clears throat> various other um, more construction projects. So we've been lucky thus far, uh, very fortunate in, in town government. Um, our highway uh, department has been healthy as has our police with a few a few scares there, a few minor, um, actually one of our police officers was uh, required to stay home 
he um, but he um, was able to keep working, which was pretty amazing from home. Yep. How do we make out Aileen with that Route Nine situation up at Vanderbilt? Any information at all on um, what we plan to do? Well, I talked to uh, Chief Benson today. You know, with the federal park closed being closed, if anyone has not driven through town on the weekends, or if anyone has driven through town on the weekends, you'll see that all the cars parked on Route 9. And so um, Rob had called the uh, head of security for the National Park and expressed you know, our concern about that. And I have a call in to their acting superintendent to try to ask them to address the situation because it's really not safe. Uh, so, but. Um, I don't believe there's a any no parking policies on Route Nine. I can check into that, but uh, so I'm think I'm hopeful that the National Park will work with us on finding a solution. Right. I think yeah. maybe we could do temporary parking over at the old uh, High Park Motors. Yeah, that's a great idea. It'd still that's be walking on happen. nine, though. It's really dangerous. Crosswalk there. You got you got yeah, sidewalks. sidewalks from there, and they that's could cross right. the light. I think we right. need the permission of the property owner, but right. maybe you know Brooke will let us, you know, let them do temporary parking there. Or, I know the railroad station's been packed on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, people park there and then walk up. Yeah. Or, yeah. or the national park could do a, you know, a more specific plan on how to park people inside. Right, right. As to put that and put them out on the highway doesn't exactly make sense, and when they have the answer, when they have parking lots. Uh, vacant, you know, <laughs> so they either they they that's something that they should really work to solve, and it might and they might need additional staff to, you know, maybe close every other parking spot. I don't know. It's uh, but it's really something that I'm looking forward to talking to them, and I think that we'll be able to work on a solution. Yeah, great. great, good, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Resolutions. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go. Do we have the minutes accepted? Oh, oh sorry. Yes. Um, good point. So may I have a motion uh, to accept the minutes of the April twentieth meeting? I make a motion. I'll and, second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. So let's move on to the resolutions. Resolution 54-1 of 2020. Resolution, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to schedule a public hearing on the 2019-2020 MS4 Permit Annual Report. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Okay. Resolution 54-2 of 2020. Resolution approving the budget revisions to the Town of Hyde Park budget for the period of April 2020 budget revisions number 2020-04. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Resolution 54-3 of 2020, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Police Department submission of the 2020 Bureau of Justice Assistance, BJA, Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant Application. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Resolution 54-4 of 2020, authorize the town supervisor to sign a letter of agreement with the PBA modifying the PBA collective bargaining agreement to include chart hours for the town of High Park Police Drug Task Force officer. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution 54-5 of 2020, resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Supervisor to execute a payment in lieu of taxes, pilot agreement, an agreement to guarantee decommissioning of the solar facility, and a stormwater management facility inspection and maintenance easement agreement for the New York Solar 1000 LLC relating to the premises located at 1436 Route 9G, Hyde Park, New York. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, resolution 54-6 of 2020, resolution authorizing the Town of High Park Town Supervisor to execute a payment in lieu of taxes, pilot agreement, an agreement to guarantee decommissioning of the solar facilities 
and the Stormwater Management Facility Inspection and Maintenance Easement Agreement for NY1000 LLC for the premises located at 129 and 133 Cream Street, Hyde Park, New York. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, so I uh, do have some uh, unfortunate news and that is um, related to our Memorial Day uh, parade and ceremony. And it really looks as if that as, and well, it's beyond it looks, we're going to have to cancel the Memorial Day uh, parade and um, our service for the public. Um, the mass gatherings will still be in force during that, uh, that period. So I'm very disappointed about that. And I've left a, a few messages for Micah Thanis to see if we can come up with a private uh, ceremony that will still comply with the, the mass gatherings uh, to honor our veterans who lost their lives in war. So um, that is unfortunate. And I know that um, you all join me in in in, uh, dis in expressing our disappointment and our gratitude to our veterans. Absolutely. Yeah, it's That's really. I mean, I know we love we love walking in the parade. Yeah. It's, it's great, and um, we will see about the Fourth of July. You know. Yeah, I was thinking about the Fourth of July. If that's still a go, I wonder. Um, you know, if we could change the theme and honor the first responders. I mean, they really have been the, the heroes during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Just that's... Honor them. Do you, what, what is the theme right now? Does anyone remember, Joe? Joe? Yeah, the, the theme's been uh, going back and forth, and we have talked about that possibility. Um, we've also talked about, you know, would there would it warrant a separate parade in the fall? Uh, when maybe the things will open up a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all. That's really now. We're just waiting to see what ha we were waiting for Memorial Day, and we know that's canceled. Yeah. And now we're in discussion about what we're doing with July Fourth. Yeah. So the theme is kind of up in the air because we last meeting we discussed it, and we said we would further discuss it at the next meeting this uh, coming month. Okay. So. Uh, thanks for that update. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, so just for a reminder for the public uh, that the um, town uh, employees are still working either at home or within town hall. And so um, to access any information or to talk with any of the town employees, just uh, go on the website and pull up the number, leave a message and um, people will return your calls. So. Uh, we are still open for business. We're still doing processing permits, as you can see. You know, we still had a bunch of stuff on our agendas and, and still going forward. So um, it's, it's a bit of challenge, challenging, but we're getting the things done. So, okay. Great. Right. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, guys. Good to see everyone. Um, sure. have, a, have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. And I second it. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Keep well. Bye-bye. Yeah, stay, stay well. safe, everyone. Peace.